Yes, yeah, so a couple of new ones in this week. Um, here's another one. You might say, what, another Sun Mustang? Well, why not? These are great Strat copies. They're vintage feel, sound great. And if you get them without holes in them or cracks in them, uh, and you get them with, oops, uh, get them with finger me shaped frets. Uh, what are they called? Jumbo frets, which this has, then you've got yourself a really nice um, starting, or starting guitar, a nice basic vintage Stratocaster, which um, I really enjoy doing up. So this one is going to get standard upgrade of tuners. Uh, the nut is pretty good. Um, it's going to get a fret level. Uh, it's going to get a clean up, check through, and then any little holes filled in. A really nice playing action set. And then at the end of this, you're going to have a fabulous um, Genuinely vintage Strat copy, nice solid, uh, heavy, nice quality feeling thing with a good vintage chunky neck. Lovely old things. So that's that's uh, that's um, the Sun Mustang. And then I think the cheapest guitar I probably ever got by some distance now in the, the we loved. Where, uh, workshop is this uh, Encore picked up last week and it's had an accident somebody's gone for a run while it was plugged into the amp and it's ripped out the uh, jack plug socket but apart from that it's all there we can replace that interestingly looking at this guitar it's been very it's a bit of a factory second by the look of it it's got some blemishes down here that are a bit unsightly but they're not the end of the world but this will be a good budget guitar when I finish with it so I'm going to enjoy taking this thing apart uh, I'll probably start that one now even let's do it just hang it up in its bits we need a, obviously a container for it and I think oh, that's the container already so question with these would be uh, do I want to set it up to in a playing sort of setup and try and do the fret leveling with the, the strings on and for me I guess that would be decided by whether or not um, I'm able to set the action the way we want it um, before doing anything else so as long as there's no other major problems which I think there might just be I think we may have to get a shim on this neck that's what I'm thinking just by looking at it the action's so high uh, I think we probably need a shim, even when we've taken down these doofers right down to the lowest level. Mm, hard to tell. We might just get away with that a shim, but I hate to have these things sitting right on their floor. But you know what I mean? I also hate to have a shim on it. So looking at this, its lowest possible action setting on the low E is going to be I want it about 1.5 millimeters for the kind of action I like. Uh, and if this gives us 1.5 to start with, uh, well, actually, you know what? It's a little bit less than that, so I think we can go with this. I'll live as for a beginner's guitar. I'll live with the sticky up what's it uh, grub screws. Personally, I don't like that so much um, because I don't like them sticking into my hand when I want to do palm palm muting on the strings. But that's a personal thing. So while I'm just at it now, I'm going to quickly whiz through this and I'm going to just eyeball uh, an action that isn't going to be perfect straight off, but it's, I'm hoping it's going to give me roughly the, uh, the action I want. Then I should have set a timer. Well, I've got a timer on the time of this video. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to straight in, in not a hurry exactly, but I'm going to go straight into fret levelling. I'll tune this guitar so I know that it's under the right sort of tension. And I'll get my fret levelling tool. Sorry, my, vid, my phone is probably making all manner of interference with the recording. should know better than this. So what I'm doing is I'm just setting the string heights at the moment to just copy the basic and um, follow the radius of the guitar. Uh, it won't be 100% accurate. I can go back and tweak it because I want each string to be roughly the same 1.5 millimeter action. Um, some people 
swear on having more, a little bit more height on the bass strings. Um, that's fine. Okay, there's my, there's my sort of starter action. I um, want a tuning, roughly. Usually high up, don't know why. So there's a hmm. right. So, the first thing I can tell you is there's something about where this neck sits that doesn't feel like it's the same. And no, it's not the neck, it's the way these actions I've got a different action set here. My mistake. So if I'm doing it, let's do it precisely and then we won't have to fiddle about. I'm wasting time. I'm trying to do this as quick as it can be done, really. So it's 1.2, it's a little bit low, so let's go a fraction higher. There's no point being over ambitious on a Encore Stratocaster, really. Might be doing it for a 600 pound guitar, but. Okay, this is 1.5, that's good. Oh wow, this one's way high. There we go. 1.5, that's good. Next one, way high. Come on, down we go. Keep going. These are also very high over the nut, and that's one of the biggest problems of this guitar, which will change when we take care of that in due course. But um, I am taking quite a lot of height off these in the middle here. It's about 1.5. This is 2.5 at the moment, so that's way too high. Down it goes. Stand up. So this one now is sitting on top of the screw. So I need to pull it back a little bit to give myself range. No, just about in actually. Sitting at two, come on down a bit more. Put 1.5. So it's very, very low setting. Or what I mean is I have to really crank all these screws right down to the absolute minimum. And they're almost on the deck. In fact, this one is going to be right on the deck. The grub screws almost fall on that. So what I'm what I may need to do is just get myself the lowest or the correct action all the way across. I'm just going to do a little adjustment here so I can get the full range of movement. Bloody hell, it's time. It's all time. Let's tighten this up a bit. This fine tuning of the, of the action, we can come back and do this uh, later on. What I'm trying to do now is set the playing action in the nearest, not worried about the intonation, I just want freedom to set the playing action as low as I think it can go. Um, and the lowest this can sit is about, really, just 1.5, it's exactly 1.5, there's no lower I can make this go, but that's not too bad. So again, I'll go back to the tune. there, just tune the other ones to match. to get to the place where this will play nicely. So I've got the action sort of as low as I want. The, the tremolo is flat on the deck. We've got probably way too much 
um, curvature in the neck, so I want to take some of that out. Because what we want is to have the neck and everything set as closely as we can to the way it's going to be uh, clockwise to get rid of the curve. So we can get it as close as we can to the way it's got to be before we start working with our in situ fret leveling. And this approach to fret leveling is great because we're doing it with the guitar under playing tension, if you like, if we get the body out here. Um, and as a result, it gives you a slightly more accurate result than uh, when you're doing it uh, with the neck flat off off the uh, guitar and relaxed. So um, I'll find a way of doing this so that's trying to cancel out some of the, the bends. I'm tightening up the truss rod to remove a little bit of this curvature and I'm just eyeballing it for now. This is a very, very, uh, sorry about that. It's a very much a by eye. Now, in truth, if I'm going to do this properly, and I'm going to make sure this action is set before I get the um, get the fret leveling done, and I'm looking at my timer 11 minutes into this, my God. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go straight after these nuts, uh, the nut slot depth. Now, I want to get this right um, and I want to be reasonable, I don't want it to be too extreme. So I'm going to go for a 0.25 which is pretty extreme and I can see right away there's a, there's a big difference. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock out the first three strings and I know I've taken the tension off and I've changed it slightly but I'm now going to go with uh, align my or arrange my set of uh, whatever these things are called nut files and I'm using I'm going to put nine strings on this in the end which I haven't got a set of right now so that's good but I'm, I'm going to use a ten set because I always want a little bit of extra room but I'm going to start with the the D so what I do is I put it in here and I check the gap plays loads of room lift it out start cutting the slot and I'm cutting backwards slight bit of downhill backwards drop it back in check with my feeler gauge, work it out. And we're going to do this for all six of them. I'm going to do it really quickly because I'm. this is a speed setup really. And what I'll do is I'll stop the clock as far as the video is concerned. I won't, I won't keep a, a clock running in the background. I'll just literally stop the video when we've done a bit and we'll come back and restart it. And the combined lengths of the video at the end will be the, the time it takes to transform this absolute hound of an encore into a fairly nice guitar. So one of the things I'm already thinking is, on this guitar, do I know for a fact that these Chinese tuners are really crap? I mean, I think they are, and everybody seems to think they are, but am I really sure? There you go, there's that one done. We're right down on the level. Um, I'm not absolutely 100% sure they're as bad as I like to think. Um, maybe they're not as bad as I like to think. I mean, what would happen if I left them on? Well, what would happen is I could sell the guitar 20 quid cheaper. Probably a, a bit more, because I would not spend time re-drilling re all the holes here, which I'd have to do to upgrade the tuners. Um, and of course, there wouldn't be the cost of the tuners factored in, which I, I factor in at, at cost. So, you know, it's an extra... 23 quid or whatever it is I'm getting for. So what I might do with this one is I'm going to see how how cheaply I can get this uh, set up for. Bearing in mind I'm still going to charge my my time for doing the work because that's you know that's the quality that I'm adding to this. I'm not going to skimp on that. So I'm still ringing nice and clear under that one and I've got a little bit more to do. So it's just a, a matter of keep on repeating, starting to just twing as it goes under there. So it's a repetitive process. Um, 
slow adjustments, small, there you go, I'll call that done. Small adjustments. No, I don't want to shut that, I need that. What are we working on? 25. 25. Change now to this one. Measure it first. Oh, way over. I don't even want to guess what that is. It's, what do I honestly think it is? I think it's about it's 0 0.7, something like that. Anyway, it's way too much. So I'm going to go with, as, as with all of them, I'm going to go down to, um, going to, down to 0.25. You're doing this yourself and you go wrong you've got two options three actually you could not so easy on the two on a strap on a strap your two options are to fill the slot that you've overcut with uh, bone dust which is which you can get from any sanding down any nut um, and mix that with super glue or you can use bicarb bicarbonate of soda and uh, super glue. They make a hard cement which you can then re-file in the same way to create the slot again. This time not cutting it too far. That's a sort of nice get out of jail free option. If you haven't don't want to do that, you could just replace the nut. So you might have a spare five pounds bone six or something. I don't know how much it is exactly. Strap bone nut sitting around waiting. This is nice. This is bone originally, so it's definitely not. I don't think it's a vitreous plastic or anything like that. So it's really cutting easily. Strats come. Modern squires come with a really horrible soft plastic nut, um, and it just it doesn't really cut. It just sort of goes into a gunge that ends up trying to it sort of grabs at your file and uh, you end up just not being able to cut it right we're there on that one so that's the bottom three done and I'm just going to get them up tune them again Basically because I just want them all, I want as much tension on the neck as possible or as close as possible to the real playing tension. Um, now I'm going for the top three, but in this case I'm just going to use the top two because I don't want the, mm, I get nervous using the really thin ones because they create a, basically end up snatching the string and getting it stuck. So again, loads of room there. So I'm using the 17.017, the, the G in the set of tens. Often these thinner strings can cut quicker than you think, so you've got to be much more, well, you be very alert when cutting these. This is where you're going to go over cut in a split second if you're not careful. You've also got to be aware that if you cut lots down and then you suddenly start cutting flatter, you'll, you'll cut that peak off very quickly and drop the playing action very very rapidly and sometimes before you even know where you are you'll have overcut it and there's no going back. Other than your bicarb of soda get out of jail free card or your replacement nut which on a strap or telly is a bit more difficult you have to get this out without cracking the wood here and um, sometimes it involves even hacksawing this nut in half so you can pull bits of it out can be a bit messy. Um, I chiseled it out or screwdrivered it out on my square Japanese strap the other day and took a bit of this wood with it. Which was a, a bit of a shame really for a vintage guitar but it just goes to show how difficult it can be even when you know it's going to be difficult. Okay a little bit more, tiny bit more and we're almost there. You see these files now becoming flexible at this size. Right, there we are. I'm going to do the next two with this one. Um, but yeah, they, at, at that G size on, and beyond, they are very flexible. I'm quite expecting these strings to break at any time. Because they are so old and rusty. But I'm only, I only need them for this job now. The only service they've got to do is to let me cut the slots on the nut 
and to keep the tension on while we're doing the fret levelling. Next, and once it's done that, we can cut them off and they can go in the bin. So they're, they're in their last few minutes of active service. But so much better to use an old set of strings for this than to put new ones on and be pulling and pushing them backwards and forwards to do this work. So you can see that I'm giving the same height uh, or getting the same nut slots height for all of these strings. Um, they're all going to end up being 0.25 action over the first fret. And when you have a guitar that's been done this way, you will immediately feel the difference. Um, it's incredibly easy to play. The hardest part of that most guitars is the unbearable fret uh, height of the action over the first fret. And people often think that a guitar's playing action, ease of it, is determined by the setting of the bridge down here. It's not. It's dictated by the height of the strings over the first fret, more or less, more, more often than not. And it's that that will make a guitar feel like uh, it's fighting you. Um, not only physically is it very difficult to play, because you, you can't fret chords easily. Bar chords like an F are a nightmare with that, when you've got high action over the first fret. Um, nearly there. Um, but possibly more significantly, uh, especially if you play in a band or you're a serious musician, Um, more significant probably is that this causes intonation problems because when the strings are f even fractionally too high over the first fret, in order to fret them you start bending them. Um, the, basically the pressure required to, to um, fret them bends them in such a way that they go significantly sharp and that causes you to have real problems, particularly when you're playing open chords. Um, you might tune the guitar up perfectly and then you play a D with three fretted notes down there and the rest open and they just sound out of tune in relation to each other. And no matter what you do, there's nothing you can do to make that chord sound good. Um, and a lot of novice or beginner guitarists well, probably, I don't know, but I'm, I'm having talked to a few, it seems to be confirmed. They blame themselves because they experience it as not being able to tune the guitar. That's all That's all it adds up to in the end. I just can't get this thing to stay in tune. Actually, they can. It's staying in tune. What they're suffering from is the intonation caused by even as much as half a millimetre too high an action over the first fret. So, most guitars come with the action defaulting out of the factory. Often it can be as high as 0.78, sometimes as high as a millimeter will come out of the factory like that. They will inherit, they will all automatically have with those problems. They'll be hard to play and uh, fretted notes will be out of tune slightly. If you're a beginner you won't notice it, you just think it is the way it is. If you're an experienced musician you'll it'll translate to you as a guitar that you just can't live with. Um, and it's all for the want of getting this bit right, which is why I put so much time and effort into getting this right. Now, at this point in time, getting the last one done, it's really critical. It's like any slip now, and you'll undo all the good work. So I'm taking this really carefully. I am there. That's my lot. So, whew, so how long is that now? We're 24. So, in less than half an hour, we have we create the playing action on this guitar. It's suddenly completely different from what it was.
glaze, great. The only thing that's now suffering from some dead notes. Slight sharp nut, which you can fire down, but it plays. The action now is suddenly great. Now, here's the fun part. Have we got the curvature right? How's that looking? Yeah, it's still a bit too much, actually. Um, but I'd live with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the next tool out. Um, I'm just looking at the time because I'm going to now switch off and go into the next thing, which is listening to the radio. So I'm going to stop there. Timer 25:51. Okay, okay. We're back in the world of quick fire setup. Now this encore, I've just put a bit of filler in here, um, but it's not really part of the process. We won't get too um, hung up on it, but it's. Uh, I need to just let this hard as nail stuff dry because I need to create a little base to take the um, screw for the, what do you call that thing, the bit where the jack plug goes because it's uh, broken away. So anyway, that will take care of that, but we'll just leave that curing in the background. Uh, I need to sculpt it a bit more and do some more stuff to it, but we'll leave that going. Meanwhile, we can now get into uh, position to do the fret levelling and for this I'm going to use this tool plus a couple of little accessories so again the clock is running so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into too much explanation mode but the point about this is I have a tool here which will work as a oh, somebody's done some scraping there I've got a tool that will work as a, a fret levelling file but the important thing about it is is that it's tunable so Instead of taking the neck off, flattening it out and using a flat file, I can now leave the neck in playing position with the tension on, with the action set the way I want it. And now I can um, use this tool to work on the frets. Um, oops, if I can get this right. I can use this, I can tune this to work correctly uh, so that it matches the curvature of the neck of the guitar. And that means I am fret levelling with a curved file on a curved neck, which is quite interesting. Now, I'm going to have to bring this in closer because it's not, it's not allowing me to, it um, doesn't quite reach the whole length of this arm. Um, I just want this roughly in the middle. So, okay, using these three little feet, I'm now going to adjust this uh, oh, fret. Um, truss rod until it moves, it's bent enough to move the middle one. Once I've got that there, it means I've put a curve in it that matches the relief of the neck and that's where it's sitting right now. It's very delicate. Now, what I want to do is I want to do the first, uh, right, I haven't got much room to move this, that's going to be interesting. It's not like on a Les Paul. So, I slack this off. It's just, now this is a little bit unfortunate because it changes. The, um, maybe I'm not going to do that. Hold fire. Thinking on my feet. What I want to do is I want to be able to do this and I'm going to pull it off to the side. For that we need a bit of tape or something. No, I need some green, this green stuff. I need to cut it off. I'm going to use a little bit of, um, uh, what's this stuff, what can we call it, you know, garden wire. I just really want to pull this string off to one side, just while I'm doing this. Um, is that going to work? Yeah, just about, it's not perfect. Uh, and how will I do that? I'll do it by hooking it onto this one here. probably enough. Okay, so we get this going. That's around about right. We've got the right amount of bend in this. And all I do now is I start working on these frets. Now, and this one, unlike uh, other jobs I've done this on, I'm not even marking the frets to begin with, which is unusual. 
because normally I would mark the frets and it would tell me straight away where I'm uh, removing metal. This one, to save time, because I'm doing this on the clock, I've just just dived in and started, so it's gonna. I can see still what's happening. Uh, it'll show me quite clearly the ones. I've already spotted one that's significantly higher than all the others, so it's it's pretty easy to see actually. Not not only that when it when it's uh, cutting or filing away, what it shows you is kind of gives you a pile of metal dust, which is pretty evident where it's making uh, taking down the, the fret. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's significantly high on this fret here, um, and a couple down, one down here. Um, now what you can do is if you're not quite confident that this uh, is following the contour of the, of the guitar perfectly as it is in its plain condition you can always stop in the middle of the process and just recheck that profile and, and make a minor adjustment if you need to. Uh, what's nice about this is when you do it in the playing position it allows you to put the string back on and check and you'll see pretty quickly uh, that's really high significantly high so you can hear it on the other strings. It's actually choking out completely. Um, these aren't playing obviously because they're, they're clamped off. And it's a bit fiddly. Um, there, there is a tool that I did buy uh, and don't now use for a variety of incredibly dreary reasons. But anyway, there is a tool you, you can buy that will allow you to do this without moving the strings out of the way and obviously that is a, an ideal situation but so I'm still choking out on that one so we've got a bit of a way to go um, so again I'll just put this around here and pull it back not really changing the, um, the pressure too much it's just just a kind of quick way of being able to pull it out of the way. That's good. So I'll carry on because I can tell that that one is still a way to go before that one's down out of the way of the other strings. So it's a really nice low tech tool this, costing approximately nothing. Well, the price of a, a neck of old rod from an old neck and this one came from a Squire Stratocaster Affinity series guitar that I bought for parts basically. The previous owner had attempted to cut the head off it and um, got a mess. Okay so what I'm seeing now is that as we get down from the extremely high frets we're now starting to see some of the other frets starting to get a little bit of um, material taken off, but this is substantially higher than everything else. It's quite amazing. Um, it doesn't you can't see it exactly visually, but it's telling us that it's taking touching this one and nothing else, which is really amazing. So again, the test of whether we're at the right sort of amount of work on it will come when we take the string back into playing position and we test whether it will play or not. And if it, it does play then we'll, we'll take it down far enough. What's also happening now is that as we get this really high one lower we're starting to take the tops off the other relatively high ones as well. fine. So we're now seeing that we're taking something off almost everything now. A couple of low ones here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to basically unhook this and just give this another quick try. Go on. Boom. It's very dirty old string so I have to be very careful not, not to slice my fingers with them because they are 
pretty manky. Okay, so what I'm looking for is other notes playing. Hey, hey, hey. Right, a little bit of a high one there to take out. So that's basically the principle. I'm going to stop the clock because I've got to come back and do it again. And we continue. The clock starts again. <clears throat> so a little tiny bit more to do on the top end up here. There's a little bit of choking right up here. We'll just get that taken care of to move on to the next line. And it's, uh, it's interesting that once we've got the major high one out of the way, everything else that's a problem then gets kind of quickly, quite quickly ironed out. So you can see now, if we now release this one. The thing about this is it takes a bit longer. I need to cut this off because none of this crap is helping me. This method takes a bit longer than other methods you can do, which are a bit cruder. Um, but, but this method does give you precision that the cruder methods don't. Tiny bit more. That last fret has got to come down a fraction, so we're almost there. My little string tie here works well. So in a way, what you really want is you want a tiny bit off the top of all the frets, and then you'll know you've actually got them all level. Um, in this case, I would be probably having to go quite some way to get that. I think what the case is here, the challenge here is that is that this one here is so high and these low ones by comparison are so relatively low that you'd probably have to grind this one down to almost nothing. It's nearly there anyway. It's an amazing amount of um, flattening on that particular one. But you know there's no escaping it. That's what's making this guitar hard to play. Um, a little bit more to do on that last one. Let's see if I can catch it. Now, some people do fret leveling. They do with some kind of on a less pull. They do a, they call it a fall away or something at the top, where um, they actually deliberately over flatten or take a bit more so there's a slope away. Not sure I've ever done that. There you go. We freed it up. It's that last tiny little bit. That's enough for my liking. We could go further, but I won't. So I'm switching over to the next lane. And again, I'm just using the little device to pull the string out of the way. That's as cheap and cheerful way of doing it as any. And it seems to work. Okay, so we now move on to this next one. So we've got a guide now that tells us which frets are gonna, gonna need to take down. And the fact that we're gonna need to take quite a lot down to get this. It's just a matter of going at it. And like I said, we, we know where the problem there is like. Straight away that one's going to be cutting away. And then when that one's down, we'll sort of reach the tops of the other ones nearby. Materials to take off that finger fret. And the problem line is until it's done, the rest of the, the rest of the um, frets won't also be levelled. So you've got to stick with it. 
just beginning to touch the other ones there on these here. That once again it's still got away. That's a horribly high fret that one. And make no apologies ready for using this quite fiercely, knowing how much of that fret's got to be leveled. try and see where we are with it. I don't want to do any more than we have to, but I can't guarantee you. Not bad, we're not far off actually. It's not the case that it has to be exactly the same all the way across. Um, and as I say, we don't want to do more than we have to, so it's always worth stopping and trying it. And then only going on further, if it's absolutely necessary. In this case, it is a little bit more, but not too much more. Again, it's worth just checking quite a simple way to, quite a simple system, so it shouldn't be too much trouble to check. Not perfect, I'll do a little bit more work. But I love how simple this system is. I mean, there's no expensive tools. Um, the person who made a, a tool out of this, or redeveloped it slightly and made a nice tool out of it, um, basically changed it or developed it, developed the idea of turned it into a tool in, in such a way that it has it had, and it made some of these parts of this operation a little bit easier. Like we didn't have to move the strings around the way I'm doing here. Um, it was a nice, nice little thing. But this is a really good budget version of the same. Almost there. There's one down there that's not quite right. But we're getting there. And it's not taking as much as the the first strings track, if you like. How simple that is. Oh, <laughs> how simple that was to lock that string off. I'm going to do it again, give another one there. It's the only thing about this garden twine doesn't last forever. It's quite, it's quite good for a while. And hey, you can use up two whole pieces of it. What the heck? I live dangerously. system on the go. This is taking time, but I have to say this is an unusually bad fretboard. Oh yeah. Ding. There we go. That should come. I'm trying to do this all with the same pressure in, so um, I need some more of this, but I can't remember where I put it. should stop the clock at this point. Ding. Clock, clock. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Mm -hmm. 
down from this and anchor it around the thingy knob if you know what I mean. Select a switch. I'm gonna yank it up from there. That'll do. Yeah, hey, hey. Okay I'll carry on after this line then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recalculate the the um truss rod just to make sure that it's in the correct configuration. I've been handling it and using it. It's always worthwhile just double checking. It will look like, let's see, this is looking a lot easier. It's connecting with, it's cutting not many more frets more quickly. So I don't think there's quite as much work in this middle or along the G string path. Hello, Marissi. Second, put it out. Again, I'm not assuming that it has to be exactly the same amount of chopping going on. More to do. More to do. is that to not be moving. So if I put that there, it will stay more or less in the same place. Mm -hmm. Popping, knocking against it in an annoying sort of way.
I've just been talking to myself for the last while. Sorry about that, the sound conked, and now we're back. And I'm at the stage of uh, polishing out the frets, so I'm just going to get straight onto it, no more messing about. Get this bit done and then carry on with it another day. with this is to take out and round off the tops of the parts and take out any of the scratches left by the fret leveling file. This is not playing cool with me this thing. Yeah, take out any scratches left by the fret leveling file. And, um, reduce the severity of those scratches grade by grade until we've got a smooth surface. And so for that purpose I find that starting by using your fingers is good because it allows you to roll sort of organically over the frets and smooth them out that way instead of flattening them with a, a block or a sand or block or something like that. Moving around, it's so annoying. for me is that I don't want to switch over to using the block until I've got all the bits of black pen up the top of these frets. Um, it's just a sort of point principle on that to make sure I get the smoothest possible polished finish in the end. Um, Stand back and look at this now. I can see just about all of the pen is gone. Um, a lot of residual dust lying around on here from the papers. blisters on my fingers now. Well, at that point, give it a bit of moisture.
I rather stupidly wrote, wrote down the first chunk of time and, uh, and then forgot to write down the rest of uh, I can't actually tell you how long this has taken so far. But because of the precision taken with the um, with the uh, fret leveling, as opposed to a sort of an all-round straight up fret leveling, uh, it's taken a bit longer. But this is much more typical of what I would do with a customer's guitar anyway. This length of time, I think that length is going exactly right. gets a little bit quicker now as we're on to the micromesh series and it takes a long time to You are losing half of your freight line. You can't your freight line. So you level it out. You shouldn't, be pushing, you shouldn't be forced to do that. It would be nice to think it could be done with a bit more precision in the first place. Or if not, then at least if the work had been done, then it's done before it goes to you. which is the point at which it starts to shine a bit. guitar for somebody but I still respect my time and working for it so I don't compromise on that this bit here the important bit making it play as well as it can play I don't think uh, as I say I haven't got the right I've got any nines string so unless I press it um, string with ten I'll have to leave it for another day anyway there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is done. Uh, we have a very dirty guitar now, which is normal. And this stuff, despite what the seller on eBay said, this stuff is definitely not low tech. It leaves me with a fair bit of hassle get it all off the guitar once I've completed this. But I can't seem to get any low tech stuff from anywhere at the moment. Or the alternative is just buy more off eBay and then discover it isn't low tech. So you know, how many times do you go and try that out? So I'm sort of waiting for some local deliveries of low tech. It just uh, it leaves me with a bunch of Blue residue that I've got to clean up each time, which is most unwelcome. Just adds more time to it that I don't appreciate.
<coughs> so, once you get to here, you can flip it over and take off these, hopefully, fairly straightforward way. Come on, suckers. The idea of making these little tabs is so that it peels back easier at this point. You can flip it over again and pull them off from the front when this is done. itself. This is much easier normally with low tank. It just peels back dead easy. And not now. Well, we get there in the very end. Satisfying bit. Off comes the tape, usually, mostly, possibly. Except these are bits. This video made you annoyed, but the uh, purpose of doing this really wasn't as much for entertainment as. No. Hello! No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm close to this first. Alright. The last leg just showed a picture of Donald Trump's campaign when somebody put Trump on a bumper sticker and they'll be held to pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. All right, then. Hell to pay. <laughs> I don't even get the going on that one. Such a frightening prospect for the human race. Donald Trump could be, in some way or other, an actual serious candidate for the role of leading, inverted commas the most dangerous military state in the entire known universe. It's just <laughs> mind-boggling and stupefying and scary, in a word. Right, so there we have it. The Encore strap starting to clean up now. Let me get the last of the grime out. So that's really nice. Uh, we'll get ready to stop the clock in a minute or so. But before I do that, I'm just going to tuck on some oil to darken up this fretboard a little bit and uh, make it look a little bit nicer. I don't think it makes any difference to how anything plays or behaves. It just People like to look at slightly darker, more contrasty looking wood. And so here we here we are chucking oil on it. Okay. 
Right, so most of them not really mostly there, apart from this sorting out the electrics, making sure that they, A, they actually work, and B, um, there's nothing major wrong with them. Uh, and I think I'm pretty certain they'll all be okay. Just looking, oh, I put that on there the other day to fill in some dents. <laughs> thinking, who put lacquer on there? Right, so, screwdriver. So apart from that, we're pretty much done. There's some scratching, scratching on here that maybe we can polish some of it out later on, but it's not really that important. This is about making this guitar play really well. The, the guitar is what it is in terms of its age and its physical finish condition. There we go. I'm ready, ready now, set up, ready to receive some new strings and to play really well. But I've got to build up this um, hole in here, which needs to be um, left to dry. It's got to go solid, so it's going to take a little while. Certainly. It's going to happen overnight, literally, it's going to happen overnight, so that's, um, yeah, that's just got to settle, um, and I probably might need to pack it out a little bit more, just, I've got to create a footing for the screw, and make it work. So there you go, stop the clock. Well, ho, just a bit more work now on the Encore, the uh, inexpensive Encore, and I think last time I was doing this, it's been a while, um, I was just filling out this area here to give us a bit of a platform to stick a screw into because this um, was a bit worn away here for some reason. So we needed a point to anchor in the little receiver thing for the jack plug. Anyway, I've got a bit of no more nails in there and that should work. I'm just conscious that this is not long enough a wire to do anything with, so I'm going to need to take this. Um, Part and just have a look and see, make sure everything else under here is working. Um, now I've done the neck on this already, so it's uh, fret leveled and ready to go. Uh, it has got the old TP style tuners on, and I have got some spare sets, and I, I think I will upgrade it, but the problem is that, of course, is it puts the price up, which guess if you're going to do the make the neck play as well as we have then you might as well make the thing stay in tune as well as it can get the most out of it I mean it's never going to be a perfect body it was not set out to be that um, but if we're going to make the thing play well then we might as well make it stay in tune well uh, <laughs> I think I'm just conscious I've had this off before, haven't I? Because I filled these holes with uh, no more nails. I can see it's giving me a sort of a bit of grip. Um, but I'm going to need to extend these wires if I'm going to. Oh, wrong one. That's a pickup. Pickup screw. Yeah. I've gone too far now. Oh. Pull this out. Okay, let's just get this thing back together first of all. So what we have under here is uh, some fairly grotty pickups in average. I don't know if I've got anything better than that. I've probably got uh, I've got loads of versions of that, that's the fact. Um, what have I got in single coil land? Let's have a quick look. Let's see if there's anything here at all worth changing out with. I've got a Sun Mustang bridge pickup. Um, I don't know what these are. Oh, this, I'm feeling they are Sun Mustang. Hmm. When did I change the whole set out? 
Do you know what? I don't know. That's the bridge one. I don't know what these are. Oh. Well done for marking them. <laughs> Plonk off. Uh, so these are all basically the same kind of ceramic magnets, ceramic pickups. So single coils with a big magnet blob on the end. Um, Yeah, I don't think I'll bother adding or taking anything away. They're not too bad anyway, guys. They're acceptable quality. <laughs> I've got nothing especially nice to add into it. Now, I do need some wire, and I need the uh, soldering iron plugged in. Um, yeah, I just need to extend this a little bit. This is too short. And we can put on one of our new fresh in today new jack plug sockets. Because um, I think I nicked that one off for something else in a hurry the other day when something broke. Um, now, what have we got? Squire strap. Squire strap. Tuners, we got Chinese tuners, we've got Squire Strap 6 in line, and we've got Easy Lock. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a set here that we can get rid of. Sealed tuners, better quality than these, but it will require drilling out, but that's not too big a deal. Um, or too big of a deal, as the Americans would say. This is an interesting look in here, it's sort of a bit of a crude routing and we've got a cutaway under here which has not been painted again. Um, when I'm at it I'm just going to flip this over and unhook this and we've got the heat up. I'm going to unhook this uh, thing and just clean it up without the electrics in the way. in it and whatnot. So this basic um, Encore Stratocaster style thing is one of the most sort of reviled and hated guitars in existence but it's I think it's an undeserved reputation. Um, first of all made by John Hornby's Fuse which is a, you know, a very good budget manufacturer it's been making these kinds of guitars for a long time and this uh, range of budget priced Encore things have been um, been around for a long time and they're extremely basically well built they're not they're nothing flashy oh, this soldering has taken a while they're nothing flashy um, but they are as far as real of guitars is concerned, as a as a basic neck and body and pickups, there's nothing too much wrong with them. And if you pay them the right attention in order to set them up correctly, then actually they reward you for the time. And really, for some reason, this is not not in the solder. But yeah, the. The neck is actually quite nice and I think I, I made it my business to set up a couple of these a while back just to kind of prove the, the naysayers wrong. You know, those people who just despise them um, out of hand. Um, so actually they're perfectly good. And I've, one of the earlier ones I set up, way back at the beginning of doing this, um, I made it play very, very well. Um, put some decent tuners on it and uh, sold it and made somebody very happy. Um, and it did set up 
superbly well and for a budget guitar it also worked with a very simple tremolo setup on it and it was very stable I mean obviously it couldn't do great big dives and massive bends and stuff but as a very basic tremolo it worked extremely well um, and gave you certainly gave you some kind of Hank Marvin potential okay well um, I'm just looking at this if I'm going to take off these tuners then I'm going to need to drill out the uh, holes which means I'm going to need to remove the neck um, I sort of was hoping not to do that because um, partly because I'd already leveled the frets with the, everything in sort of plain condition so I didn't really want to mess around with the neck settings or anything because that alters everything a little bit I'm just noticing this has been over tightened in the past um, you can hear the sort of well, you could hear the sort of almost split, splitting noises as we were taking the screws out um, there's a small split down here in the pocket which is often the result of over tightening so drill these out I'll need to put them up on the uh, pillow drill and drill them out that way but it's easy enough to do I won't do it tonight obviously because it's late but I'll do that tomorrow and then we'll reinstall the neck and then get back into stringing it but I can do the wiring bits now get the jack plug sorted levering this out also got, yeah, quite a tight fit so there's no shims or anything um, go down there for a minute so very lightweight body um, but again no reason why this won't play nicely uh, I've got a few different bodies down here actually. This is open for options to use. Okay. There's, there's this one down here. That's a um, that's a uh, Affinity Squire body. Be quite interesting. That, that could become that. I'm sure I've got a spare. I probably have got a spare neck as well. That's a pretty close fit actually. You could almost drop that in, um, change out everything. Mm -hmm. It's got a bit of uh, insulation paint in there as well. So that's a bit more interesting than the uh, black one, isn't it? What we've got sort of white, blue and white. <laughs> what do you say? Could, couldn't we? Let's see. Anyway, we've got still got things to do. This one, I mean, it has a little crack down here, and it has um, it's been scratched a lot. It's not in very good condition. But we said that it's a, it's a heavier body than the uh, yeah more substantial body. It certainly would work. Let's see. I mean, it's kicking around, it's not actually doing anything, and I don't think I've got, I've got a spare neck, which is a Squire Affinity neck, but it needs refretting because the frets are pretty worn out. So I might as well. There's no reason why not to use one of these. Um, hmm. All right, we'll leave this off for now because we've still got to cut the holes for the tuners. And while I'm at it, I'm going to extend these two wires here so that we can attach the, uh, the jack plug socket plug. The time is right. I'm going to carry on with the same colour scheme, might as well. So that we're going with a black and a red. Not very good quality wires, they're just sort of jumper wires or anything. 
not too through with that. I think I was rather something flexible. So I'm going to go grey instead of red. Because I haven't got the right kind of red wire. So orange, um, orange, red becomes grey. What the heck? Just give me a bit of extra length. And uh, I've given up with my wire cutter. Um, I just ended up using the uh, Stanley knife. Oh, this is a twin core thing, isn't it? Duh. Don't really need that. Hmm. What do we got? What's the yellow doing? A single core. Let's go black and yellow then. Yeah, I bought one of those wire cutters and I just couldn't get on with it, so I resort to doing it by hand with a bit of fingernail, thumbnail. A bit of careful handling of the blade and the spin round of the blade. And there you are. It's not that hard. Okay. Um, do I have the burner here? No, I don't. I can't do a shrink wrapping thing. Just this a second. Can I? Can I? Nope, it's gone somewhere else. Okay. So I'm just going to join these bits together. To do that, I'm going to need to cut a little bit off here. So this is the, the hot one, the red one, and then the black one is the earth. And I'll join these and I'll put a bit of I put a bit of uh, shrink wrap stuff around them, um, but I'll have to go inside to get the burnery thing. So it's easy enough to do because they just basically we can twist them to begin with and then join them and then put the shrink wrap over the top afterwards. So our imagination will allow us to believe that yellow is in fact the new red. Um, simple enough. Okay. Some door. Um, what else do I need in the world? The burner. I'll tell you, we could use a hot air blower, but I haven't got one of those either. Okay, so um, in this case, I'm not even going to go and get the grippers for this. I'm just going to uh, do it floating in the air. Shouldn't, it's not too critical, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. So. to um, put this back in tonight am I going to choose the blue the blue body and will it fit that's the first question will it be a straight fit what we don't know is where the holes well the holes don't line up that's the first thing that's okay we can make new ones the critical ones at the top end here line up um, it's a hybrid Oh, cool. Everything else pretty much lines up. Bridge will line up. Six holes. 
uh, should be should be all straight forward. Um, as I say, we need, we need to drill some extra holes in here. What do you think out loud? Should I do it? Should we put the blue affinity body on? No, to be honest, it's no worse than the, um, the black one. I mean, this black one has, you know, it's got a fair few dents and it's got a bit of a sort of splodge around here and it's very light. So, let us see, while we're at it, let us see if this tremolo block matches up perfectly on the back of there. Just find the colour a bit more interesting, that's all. Plus the fact it's got some uh, insulation paint in there as well, which is quite an attractive feature. don't know if it's going to be a straight swap over. Looks pretty close. We can, uh, we can only find out, can't we? <laughs> too fast. up according to that just about I'm not going to use it with a tremolo anyway so as far as I can see as long as it just uh, does its job sort of hard tail job Is how well does this fit? So go through here. Small holes in wood can be bloody hard to navigate. Come on. Get this one 
at. Okay. What do we think? We can do up the first two and then put new holes in for all the rest. fit for those top ones. Why not? That's quite nice, that blue. Why is this not the right thing? Because it isn't. matches up with the uh, neck pocket just about perfectly but everything after that is just out of reach it's okay we'll get the dremel on that and drill those okay let's fill these in the only thing we won't know is what the angle of the neck is the geometry of the neck, so whether we need to shim it to make it work or not. So this was the, began life as the six pound Encore, which has suddenly now become a hybrid. Um, but it's fine because I'm not going to ever claim it to be anything but a mixture of things. Um, so it's a slightly better weighted body than an Encore. And just a slightly more interesting colour as well, I guess. Okay, there's my wires for the jack plug, jack plug socket. My earth wire. Shortish. So I'm just going to solder on the earth wire here. And get it to stay holding on. Thank you. That's good. I fold that down a little bit and then I'm going to drop in the uh, Springs. Not really technically necessary on this because it's not doing, not really working as a tremolo, it's just going to make sure it stays flat against the body of the guitar. Okay. I will need my little grippers for this. So I'm going hell for leather at this and I haven't really tested the neck geometry yet. Um, what I don't even know is whether the holes match up. It's doable even if I don't. I'm 
put the plate on in a minute as well. I just want to make a sort of marker on here. So where we get to two. Interesting. Pull that out and just see if it went into the hole. Because if they are actually lined up, that would be quite a bizarre coincidence. Seems like it was. Let's see what happens. Good surprise, actually. Perfectly positioned just by chance, eh? Let's see what it looks like afterwards and then whether it's feasible or not. That one's perfectly fitted as well. Let's leave it sit there for a, a while and see what becomes of it. But first of all, the last thing tonight, I'm going to go with the fitting the um, thing, you know, socket, put socket, jack plug thing, you know, whatever. So. A stereo for a minute, but they're not. They are good old fashioned monos. Okay. So, live to the tip, live to the tip, which is this one here. I'm just going to tin these both. into this 
one here, which is the, can I reach it? No, I can't reach it. More like it. And while that's there, we add a bit more. Suder. And sometimes I don't think very much very closely about which way the wires come out so I've got one of them sort of sticking out in a very stupid way and another one a bit more sensible but that's me rush straight in without thinking now I need a jack plug socket oh look we have one here a nice a shiny one Not very exactly very easy to um, get grips with these things in this position. And then you're sort of stuck needing more pair of pliers and okay, so there's my my soldered thing. Do you fit? Do you fit? Fit. Yeah, just about. But I'll do a quick test in a minute to see that I've got it correctly wired. Or that nothing is touching anything or short out anything. Okay, so as a, a quick test, we've got Squire Affinity Body, we've got Encore Neck, and we've got Squire Electrics. Um, something's not burst properly. So that is earthed. It's a lot of. I don't like that plug for some reason. I'll try something simpler. Okay, so that's 
so that's not good. Let's just make sure that what we've got going on in here is right. So what we didn't know from the beginning is whether the electrics on this Encore were damaged. So I haven't had a good close look at it, which I need to do really, since uh, the owner told me that her daughter gave the thing a good yank and pulled it out of the um, pulled it out of the amp. So for all I know, something else has come come off there. Let's try something here. I mean, I forgot to do. Okay. <coughs> it's amazing. Okay, I need to isolate those off, but. Um, So a bit more room to manoeuvre. So these are okay. I'm just going to tack that down again because there's nothing wrong with that as far as I can see. I'm tightening up, but the connections are good. sort of hoped that the only thing would have been the jack plug itself that was broken, but probably need to have a bit of a closer look at everything else by the sounds of it. And we have enough room to tip it over, still attached, and just get it so we can see everything. And just examine all the connections. So it's Any other breakages or disconnections? That's the correct, that's the live, that's the earth coming off the top. Those are all earth properly, the pickups. The three lives go to the top there. Um, uh, might be, that might be touching something, shorting out. That might also be touching something keeping everything out of the way of everything else. And that is that out of the way of that one. Sometimes you've got a, not very much room to work in. Things need to be kept away from other things. Those aren't touching. That's okay. That's live. That's earth. Just have a listen now. See if anything changes. It's a really difficult socket to unplug. the volume it should. So something's something's lost somewhere. And I'm earthing out. Which suggests something is wired incorrectly or there's a dry joint or something like that. Let's just follow it through. Okay. So the first question I've got where is this thing earthed to? My glasses. 
It's all interesting, you know. What do we got? We've got double dual cables, tw twin core cables from pickups, and each one has a com has a earth that goes to the earth on top of the pot. Top of the pots. That's fine. Um, and then the live goes to these over here, which is the part the places on the switch. And you've got the output from the switch there, and you've got one output to the tone there. You've got a joint over a jumper or a connector, earth connector over the top. But I didn't get this. Out to the middle, out to the middle. On the top, on the top. Yeah. Well, there's something wrong with these pots, maybe. But, but why does it? Why does it look like? Or was it saying it's not earthed properly? goes through, that's earthed nicely to there, that black one goes through to the sheath or the core, the edge of it, confused man. Figure it out just yet. I'll put you on hold while I work this out. 